Hi, this is Paul Shear with Informed CIO. Today we're going to be talking about sequential versus random disk access and why it's important in context of your SQL Server transaction log. Now I'm sure most of you have heard before that you need to take your transaction log and isolate it to its own spindles. The question is why? Well, that's one of the things that we're going to try to demonstrate in, uh, in this video. Now, what we're going to be doing our testing on is this SAS Array B that you're seeing here in the uh, Array Configuration Utility. It's a, a RAID 5 stripe that's consisting of six 146 gig drives. So basically we've got six drives, RAID 5 configuration, we're going to be writing across all of them. Now I, I know a bunch of you are jumping up right now going, RAID 5, RAID 5, it's awful for write, why are you using that? Well. I'm just using it for purposes of a test. You wouldn't actually want to use it in a real performance situation, but it's it's going to work for demonstrating the uh, the uh, differences between sequential and random, and just what that does to your uh, to your overall throughput and the latency of your uh, drives. So to demonstrate this, we're going to flip over to iometer and we're going to run a test against this disk. I've created a disk access pattern I'm call, calling SQL. If I edit this, you'll see that we have 8K pages. Uh, it's set up to be 100% write, and it's 100% uh, sequential. So let's go ahead and click OK and start the test. Save our results, flip over to the results tab, and amazingly, we are getting well over 400 megabytes per second uh, throughput. Latency is well, well under the 20 milliseconds that we need to be concerned with. Looks like we're setting at about 14.3 right now. Uh, so remember, this is a RAID 5 stripe. So we've got the write penalty working against us, and we're getting well over 400 megabytes per second, 14 milliseconds latency. So let's go ahead and stop this test. We're going to go back to the access specification and we're going to change it so that we're going to now introduce 10% latent or 10% uh, randomness into our overall I/O pattern. So 90% of it's still uh, sequential. Only 10% is random. Now this could be a scenario where you've decided I've got all of that free disk space out there and the only thing I've got on it is this small transaction log it's a complete waste of real estate I, I need to better utilize that so uh, against your better judgment you decide to put some other type of workload on that same disk you figure it's not really that busy you know 90% of it's still all gonna be this transaction log the other 10% will be this this other workload so let's, let's see what happens with that line of thinking. We'll go ahead and say OK here and kick off our test. So before we were at over 400 uh, megabytes per second and under 15 milliseconds latency. What's going on now? Anyone want to guess? Well, as you can see, our, uh, our throughput is uh, falling very, very fast and our latency is climbing. Our latency is well above the 20 uh, milliseconds that we need, and our um, uh, throughput, you know, right now is under 60 megabytes per second, and it's continuing to fall. I I'm guessing it'll probably stop somewhere around 45 to 50 megs per second, um, with a latency somewhere of under 120 milliseconds. I mean. This is absolutely awful disk performance. This sucks. You could not run your pr uh, production system on this. And this is because you introduced just 10% random I.O. So let's go ahead and stop this test. Ask ourselves the question, could this get any worse? Oh, yes, it could. Going back to our access specification, we're going to select that. We're going to edit it. And we're going to increase this to 50%. If I can get it over, there we go, and say OK. Go ahead and kick off of our test. Yeah, we're going to save the results, and I'm going to flip over to the uh, to the results display. And we, uh, I think before uh, with 10%, we were down at about 50 megabytes per second. 
latency was around 120 milliseconds. Let's uh, let's see what we end up with now. Looks like uh, total disk throughput is half of what it was before, and uh, latency is like 220 milliseconds and climbing, and throughput is falling. These are abysmal disk performance numbers, and it's all because you made the stupid decision to put some other type of workload on the disk with your transaction log. You should be fired. Or at a very minimum, you should get rid of that other workload and restore the performance back to the former glory that it once had. This is Paul Shearer with Informed CIO, hoping you don't think I'm totally insane, and wishing you a great day. Goodbye.